All right. This is the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast coming live and direct from the echoey gloom tomb of Los Angeles, California. My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Man Dingo, a.k.a. Mr. Backdoor, a.k.a. the Backdoor Man. Um, I'm in here with my partner, G. Monetti, G. Moody, last name rhymes with duty. Uh, they call him the Black Ed McMahon. He's also the 2015 podcast co-host of the year. Um, we're doing it big. Uh, what's going on, my man? Everything is good, man. Uh, I see you guys having a heat wave out there. It's crazy, man. Stay inside. Chill out under that AC when you can. Let me tell you something. It is really, really hot out here in California. I mean, really, really hot. Uh, uh, oppressively hot. Um, it's offensively hot. It, it, it's, 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 it's bad mood hot. Um, it's, 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 it's any kind of adjective you could come up with to describe the heat. It's, it's shit. And it's, it's only June. It doesn't rain here in California. And that sounds good for a little while, but then you realize you're living in a, in a, in a, just a, a, a desert of, of just heat. So, uh, Monetti, what's up? Didn't we make a bet about the NBA playoffs? Cause I was reminded on Twitter that me and you made a bet. I don't recall that. I don't recall making a bet. No, we made a bet. It was it was something about one of us. I have to listen to the episode, but one of us, well, the loser, that's me. Uh, I, and I, I don't want to go down that road of talking about the finals. I'm just starting to feel like myself. I was on an IV uh, right. for about 36 hours after Golden State uh, lost. I'm feeling good. Um, uh, uh, and, and so I don't want to go too deep into the finals because I don't want to I don't want to get PTSD. Okay, but one of us lost the bet, and, and it was me, and it was something about I have to go on the train and say, uh, I don't know, LeBron's the best, or the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast kicks ass, or something. Uh, maybe one of the listeners um, can, can tell us what the bet was, uh, so I, I, could, I could not have to listen to my voice, because uh, listening to the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast, you know, uh, over and over and over, uh, for me, myself, is hard to do. Because uh, I, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I have this voice in my head. I have this voice in real life. I lay down at night to go to sleep. It's talking to me. It's, it's harassing me. It's agitating me. It, 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 it never goes away. Um, so maybe somebody could, could spare me having to listen to the episode yet again to find out who, uh, what, the, what, the, what the ramifications were of that bet. Nonetheless, as everybody knows, the Cleveland Cavaliers beat the... Um, Golden State Warriors. Um, And here's what I'll say. Listen, the Warriors have been untouched. They haven't had any scrutiny. They haven't had any backlash. All the way to winning a championship. All the way to Steph Curry's two MVPs. All the way to them getting to the finals twice. And all the accolades and so on and so on. And now, like all the other greats, whether it's Tom Brady, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Kanye West... Anybody who, who, who's really trying to do something special, Muhammad Ali, uh, uh, you know, defeat is inevitable. Mm-hmm. Y- y- you have to regroup and, and uh, come back. And I think that they will. I think that the Golden State Warriors w- will be a better team from it. I think they'll make some adjustments. I think they have to improve and, and get, you know, at least uh, somebody off the bench that could, could service them in the post. I remember last year. Uh, we were we were cheering um, and and from the sidelines to get David Lee in the game because of the same thing against these same Cleveland Cavaliers, and when they put David Lee finally in the game, he was able to bang with them, and 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 get some some low post presence. So I think uh, obviously it's it's easy to say in hindsight, and it's you know when the three doesn't you know take you to the championship, the three pointer, you know you you need to question things, you can question things, but I feel like not having somebody off the bench that could bang around. Uh, even Bogut, you know, he's a rim protector, but he, you know, he, he's more of a facilitator. You need a guy who can score 12, 14 points off the bench, banging around in the post, out there banging with them, pushing them around, that sort of thing. Um, what do you have to say uh, about this, Monetti? Uh, I, I think Golden State will be fine. 
but they are basically the New England Patriots now, the NBA. You go this far and you don't get the prize. You had a great season, but now that season means absolutely nothing because you didn't win. So now it's infamy you're in. You see, it's crazy. LeBron goes, gets exalted, and Steph gets crushed. You know what's funny about, about, about you and, and, and your shit is that the, the, um, the Five Mike I Am Rapport Stereo podcast, the LeBron bash, you're on the fucking episode with me. And all of a sudden, you, 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 you just fucking jump ship. You have a, a 19 months with me banging on this fucking guy. And now all of a sudden, you're like carrying his fucking bags. So you know just, just don't, don't think you could escape the 19 months of berating the guy because you were right there with me. And I remember when LeBron James, uh, me and you were watching it in, in my mom's apartment, um, which then turned into the gloom tomb of, of Manhattan. We were watching him when he we went to Miami in the fireworks show. Yeah. And you fired me up. You were like, look at this fucking guy with the fireworks. And what the fuck is this guy doing? You gacked me up. And now all of a sudden, G. Monetti, who they, they call, um, uh, what are they, co-host Stradamus. Yeah, That's one of your monikers now. Co-host Stradamus <laughs> is all up in the LeBron James Kool-Aid. What the fuck, man? Yo, I, I, I started to, I hated that Miami shit because they were, it was like a pep rally. And I was like, man, they think winning championships is so easy. But he accomplished the goal and he left. And then he accomplished another goal. So after they lost their first year with Miami, I started to see a different player totally dominating the game. I had to change. I had to switch over because greatness is greatness. Okay, so for, for those of you who haven't listened to the, the, the LeBron James bash episode, I don't know what number it is, please listen again and, 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 and point out some of the fucking highlights of Gerald because it wasn't just me hitting this fucking guy. Nonetheless, it's time to move forward. Word. The Cleveland Cavalier fans are out in droves. They're giving away free tattoos. I mean, these people in Cleveland, they don't know what to do with themselves. And there was like a, a mini riot some tattoo parlor was giving out a commemorative Cleveland Cavalier championship tattoo. And, and, and you know, listen, I'm happy for these people, but they, but, but they call it the wasteland. You, you actually invented that, didn't you, G? Yeah, did you come I said, up with that? Yes, yes. This has nothing to do with Cleveland Cavaliers uh, or the fans. It's the wasteland. No, I know, but you, you did come up with the moniker, uh, the nickname of calling Cleveland, what is it? Yes, I, I, I admit that. But what did you call it? The Wasteland. Okay. All right. Anyway, so, so there was a, like a little, people were just losing their minds out there. They're getting these godforsaken, you know, scribble, scrabble tattoos. I have three of them on my body. Don't do it to yourself. Or if you do it, do it in a hidden place. Don't do it on your arms and a wrist. I have these, 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 these shit tattoos. I have one on my elbow. It looks pathetic. It looks ridiculous. And as age and time goes on, they look worse and worse. Um... Did you see J.R. Smith right after the finals? He gave a heartfelt, um, you know, he, he, it wasn't an apology. It was sort of just an emotional um, response to winning. It was Father's Day. Um, it was the most humble and, 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 and sort of human. I've seen J.R. Smith in his entire career, although I did see him in his rookie year on, on in a thing, and he was very humble and human. And then a couple hours later, he was in a club in Vegas because the, the Cleveland Cavaliers, why rush to go back to Cleveland? No other team in the history of sports has ever not went directly home. Of course, the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to go to Vegas before they go to Cleveland. It's like you want to avoid going back there even if you did win the fucking championship. Because <laughs> you, you, you know that they went, to, they went to Vegas before they came home, right? This, right? You know this, Monetti? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I, I, why, would, why would you rush to go to Cleveland? But then he was in the club, like, chest naked, pouring champagne all over people and women, men. Like, he just didn't give a shit. And then when the plane finally got to the land, which you referred to uh, 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 as the wasteland, right. he, he had a, just shorts on. I, I got, I'm with J.R. Smith. You know why he did that? It's because of guys like you uh -huh. who, who have been hammering him his whole career talking about he's this, he's that, he'll never win. 
Well, he won. So he's going to do everything that you hate. So <laughs> for me, <laughs> for J.R. Smith and everybody like him, fuck you, Rappaport. We won. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's really cute. Again, um, people need to go back and listen to some of the uh, 170 past episodes where you were, I believe you referred to him and Iman Shumpert as the, 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 it was last year's playoffs. It was the Splash Brothers versus the Trash Brothers. Yeah. The fuck up brothers. I have to give Gerald Moody, that was credit for that. And you also said it was the Splash Brothers versus the fuck-up brothers. Right. So you, you all of a sudden, everything is okay, but you, you gave these guys the, the moniker, the fuck-up brothers. Yo. You did that, and it was cre a creative stroke of genius. But all of a sudden, everything's, it's, it's, it's all good, huh? Winning is a deodorant. Winning changes shit. Remember that. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, l l l it's time to move forward. Um, the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast is sponsored by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the first place I go to. It's the first place you should go to to get tickets to a game or a concert. It's easy, it's fast, and it helps you get the best deal for any event you want to go to. I just bought tickets using SeatGeek to get Rihanna tickets this summer. SeatGeek pulls all the tickets available on all the other sites, puts it into one place so you can save time and never miss a deal. Every ticket on SeatGeek is given a grade based on value so you immediately find underpriced seats. And before you buy, you could get the SeatGeek's detail map to see exactly where you're going to be sitting, see a view from your seat. It's fantastic. Best of all, SeatGeek is always honest and upfront about the price, unlike StubHub. SeatGeek shows you the full ticket price from start to finish, never surprises you with any huge fees at checkout. My listeners get $20 off their first SeatGeek rebate. Download the free SeatGeek app, go to the settings tab and click add a promo code, use Rapport, R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T, and SeatGeek will send you 20 bucks back after you made your first ticket purchase. Download the SeatGeek app, it's helpful, you save money, it's fast, it's efficient. All right, Monetti. What up? Um, is the weather hot in New York City? Oh, uh, you know, it's 87 with high humidity, which is always par for the course here, so it's miserable. And you're always sweating, even when you're just walking around. That really sucks. Hell yeah. Um, that really sucks. Uh, that that's called swamp ass central. Yes. Um, this, this is the this is the time of year where swamp ass runs rampant. Right. It, it, there's no escaping it. There is, there is no escaping swamp ass during this time of the year. Um, use your powders. Use your lotions. Wear underwear that fits holds snug i would carry you a tissue box to have no shame in the game go clean yourself off carry some wet wipes with you in, in 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 your knapsack your bag your man purse whatever you're into i cannot wait to go on tour with you g monetti yeah the i am rapport stereo podcast world tour takes off july 28th in minneapolis the 29th in Milwaukee, and the 31st in Chicago. We got a rapid pack representative in Chicago, Milwaukee, and Minneapolis. If you want to come see us live, go to IamRappaportTour.com. The live tour is going to start off in Minneapolis. Some people say, why Minneapolis? Well, it'd be easy to start a fucking world tour in Paris. Anybody could do that, <laughs> right? You know, am I right or wrong, Monetti? You're Anybody right, bro. could just, You're oh, right. we're going to start Paris, or, oh, we're going to play Radio City Music Hall. But we're going to make the people wait, okay? We're going to go to Minnesota. We're going to go to Milwaukee. We're going to tear shit up. We're going to go to Chicago. We're going to tear shit up. And then we'll take our time to go to Italy. Yes. Before performing in, in, in some big amphitheater out in Italy. We'll take our time to go to uh, Spain and Brazil. <laughs> we, we, we don't do it like everybody else. That's for sure. Okay, so we're starting out small. But there's going to be a feverish crowd out there on July 28th. It's going to be feverish. Yes, indeed. And, and, and you'll see. What'd you say, Monetti? I said, yes, indeed. We're ready to go. All right. And I'm going to just spill the beans on one thing. Our dream guest, and I want the Rapper Pack to get involved with this to, on Twitter. We're trying to get a live interview with Latrell Sprewell when we're in Milwaukee. Well, All right. We need Twitter help. I'm doing everything I can on my end, but we want to, we want to create a hysteria. How great would a live interview in his hometown of Milwaukee, July 29th, be with Latrell Sprewell? He's on Twitter. I'm hitting him. Wrap a pack. Whoever's down for this, hit Latrell Sprewell and let him know. Try to make this happen. We need the push for this. Yes, okay? Spree. Spree. 
We yeah. love Spree. It would be it would be epic interview. Um, so so we're trying to do that. Um, so I have I don't know if this is a wig of please. I don't know if this is a sick fuck of the week, but I want to throw this at you. Do you know that in in in, in China? In a town called Yulin, China. It's a city. Yeah, I heard this. <laughs> these cocksuckers, these sick fucks, the whole fucking city, it's the sick, the sickest shit. These motherfuckers have a dog eating festival. Mm. Vendors, they, they, they slaughter their dogs and they cook their dogs. In restaurants across this city, like they're fucking hamburgers. Damn. First of all, first of all, dogs are not meant to be to be eaten. You fuck. Well, that depends. Second of all, that, 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 second that, of all, that, if if you could eat other things, why would you choose to eat a dog? They, 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 I mean, that is so far out. And way out there, they eat cats too. These sick bastards, and 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 you know who you know who wanted to chime in on this? They have people walk around with their dogs. They bring them like they 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 bring their dogs to slaughter and then they eat them. Yeah, I read about that. You cock suckers, you want to eat my fucking dog? I'll fucking break your fucking head, you dog eating motherfucker. <laughs> You kitten and cat eating cocksucker! You wanna try to eat my fucking dog? I'll bust your fucking hole! These cocksuckers want. You try to fucking eat Bowser? I'll bust your fucking hole open, you cocksucker! <laughs> you sick son of a bitch! Yeah, man. These motherfuckers are eating dogs over there. I saw. I saw Matt Damon and some actors, some uh, celebrities came out there. I want to tell Matt Damon and them, get your ass out of China. Leave them. That's that's their culture. That's their country. What are you going to do over there and say, stop eating dogs? Let them do what they do. They don't come fuck with Americans. You poodle eating motherfucker. (laughs) What the fuck is wrong with these people? These cocksuckers want to try to eat Wheezy? My dog? No fucking way, you motherfucker. They, they, they beat the dogs and then they burn. Why would you even want to eat a dog? Hey, every country got their own crazy shit. They, they, if they want to butterfly Wheezy, let them butterfly. Nah, yo, my man, my man, my man, cool out. They're not <laughs> fucking with my dog. Okay, you, 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 ain't, you ain't making no kebab with my shit. Yo. You're not making no fucking... German Shepherd kebab. Uh, yo, these people are sick. Hey, so I man. don't know if they get the sick fuck of the week. It's how could you give the whole city the sick fuck? Should I give them a collective sick fucks of the week? Yeah, yeah, that that's sick, man. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. Yo, did you see uh have you watched finished watching OJ? Oh. Let 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 let, 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 let yes. I, I, I loved it. Yo, Ezra Edelman, the director of the OJ and ESPN 30 for 30s, you killed it. You've yeah. outdone yourself. Yes. Um we we reviewed episodes one, two, and three. Um four and five are just better and better and be- better. Talk about Bizarro Land. Yeah. You know, the episode four covers when he gets not guilty, and it, it it covers the ramifications of the not guilty on the Goldman family and the Brown family, and 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 more importantly, the racial divide. Um, how the nation was split because you know the bottom line was this: black people. A lot of, I don't want to generalize and, and, and throw everybody in it, but a lot of black people were celebrating OJ's uh, not guilty uh, 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 sentence, uh, not guilty, uh, um, the fuck is it called, G? He was acquitted. Acquitted, sorry. They're not guilty. Of, we, we don't fact check at the Iron Rap person. You could be like, oh, you dumb fuck, you don't know that. No, 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 no. We don't fact check. 
Okay, we we don't do that over here at the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Nope. Um, so he was acquitted. So a lot of people, and they showed the footage of his uh, of black folks were, were were happy about this, and 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 a lot of white people were were like shocked that that black people were were happy about it, and 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 it was a really exploration in where the country was at racially. And and I, I want to lo- I love to hear your take on it, but but the bottom line is is you know the perfect storm happened, um, you know because of all the injustices done on on black people in this country um, by by uh, not just the police, just in general, just the federal government, the fucking states, states and fed, just just in general, yeah, all the all all the black people that have been put in jail um, and th- with the lock and key thrown away with with lack of evidence. And, and, you know, women saying, oh, this black guy raped me. And then they just pick up five black guys and one of them's going to jail and so on and so on and so on. We don't need to go into the details. You, you must know them. You have to know them. Right. At that point in, the, in, in whatever it was, 93, 94, 95, I can't remember what year it was, people were happy that OJ got off just because of the injustices. And the same people would even acknowledge that he probably was guilty. Uh, of course. And this documentary articulates this very well it doesn't pass judgment um it's just fantastic i highly recommend you watch it um i know you could stream it i have no no uh, agenda me and g monetti are just fans of it and 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 we talked about it a lot on the show we talked about it off off the podcast uh you know being fascinated by it and 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 um just riveted by it and i mean there's there's about two to three jaw-dropping moments in all five episodes, literally, like your jaw drops, you're just like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, what the fuck? So, I, so let's talk about episode four before we go into the, the episode five. That have just been called Bizarro OJ Land. Yeah. So, what w- what do you think about ex- episode four and what I was just talking about, uh, Mister Monet? I, I, I couldn't believe after he got acquitted, he thought things were the same. He really, he actually convinced himself that he was a white dude. Like <laughs> right. Like, he really convinced himself, like, like he didn't understand. Like, like uh, Greg, this, this uh, columnist in New York Times wrote an article about this guy, O.J. Simpson. And basically, he said he failed, he tried and failed to outrun his blackness. And, right. And just to see this guy around Brentwood acting like nothing, these people are his friends, and this and that. This guy's so delusional. We need to really speak about mental illness and domestic violence because this guy was an abuser. Mm. So we need and, to. And you know, one of the things that I had heard that was going to be in the doc, um, but I, it probably got cut out because, you know, when you're making a, a, a film, so many things got cut out. They talked about the possible. Now, there's no excuse for any of this shit. There's no excuse under any circumstance for putting your hands on any female ever, no matter what, especially not beating their ass the way this fucking savage was, and right. of course, killing and murdering. They talked about the, the, you know, the CTE, the concussion factors, and they, you know, at one point, I, I think in, in this doc, there were scenes they, that they were talking about you know, that he might have you know, uh, suffered a lot of uh, concussions playing football, and his head, this is for real, if you look at it, he's got a ginormous head, and the technology and the football equipment, you know, he played with those little rinky-dinky Tonka toy bullshit football helmets. He couldn't even fit his head in the normal football helmets. Right. He had to remove padding to get his head into the, the football helmet, which was already under padded to begin with. Nonetheless, this guy is a real piece of shit. Yo, that and, and totally, totally delusional, totally uh, uh, just out of touch with everything, he thought that after he was found not guilty, it was just going to, things were just going to go back to being hunky-dory. Right. And then after that, you know, they, 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 they show um, never-seen-before footage of the civil suit, because we forget that the civil suit took place right after he was found not guilty of the murder trial, and he was found guilty in the, in the, in the civil suit. It was, it was like, a, it was like, a, like a, a washout. It was like a no contest. Right. Um, 
And then, you know, he figured out ways to, to not have to pay the Goldman and Brown family the money. But then there was other ways. Eventually, you know, O.J. Simpson was scrounging around for money, living in Vegas, living in, 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 in Florida, and just being a, you know, we forget about that, that time. I, I know I just stopped paying attention because it was just so hard to look at how is this guy free. Right, right. But part five just shows, like, those years before he got arrested, which I never really put him in jail for now. And this guy's a real piece of shit. Man. Yeah. And, and the crazy thing is, G, is that he's going to get out of jail. I, 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 I just feel like the way the chips are, 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 are stacked for him, he's going to get out of jail. I was meeting with some agents the other day, you know, some Hollywood agents, some right. talent agents. And, and the reality is, is like, there's, there's Hollywood agencies. And, and the way the reality world is, is set up now and the internet, somebody will pay O.J. Simpson a lot of money to do a reality show as soon as he gets out of jail. Of and course. to write a book, and he'll be able to profit off of being O.J. Simpson again. O.J. Simpson, the murderer. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and these people that uh, you see them, in, uh, they're being interviewed, and they say, oh, I really like O.J. because, you know, he really was charming. Those people don't understand domestic violence and the, the profile of, a, of an abuser. The charm is part of the act. That's to disarm you. But but behind closed doors is the reality. Mm. That's what it is. And people need to understand domestic violence. That woman was frightened. She even said right. it. She Nicole Brown uh, even said it. You don't know this man. You don't know him. So imagine what she was dealing with. Yeah, it, 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 it's... It's an incredibly well done documentary. Again, if, if you haven't seen it, I suggest you, you, you see it. it. It's easy to get. You, you know, you could download it here, or there. I know we, I watched it on ESPN, the ESPN app, because I just didn't, I couldn't wait. Once I started watching it, I didn't want to wait anymore. Um, and it's just, it's just compelling. It's fascinating. It deals with not just OJ, it just deals with race in our society, which is, which is always going to be um, complicated um, and frightening. Um, to discuss, um, I got to be honest with you. When I was watching the, the OJ documentary, a lot of times I was uh, the last three episodes I watched from my bed, and I slept comfortably afterwards because I sleep on a Casper mattress. Oh hell yeah! Casper mattress is an award-winning sleep company. They created a mattress that was awarded one of the best inventions of 2015. Fair-priced mattresses shows up in your house in a box award-winning brand new technology now there's biters companies that are trying to bite casper's style casper gives such a guarantee for their mattress they'll let you sleep on the mattress for a hundred nights if you do not like it they will pick up the mattress return you your money for free that is satisfaction guarantee you can buy a king size mattress for up to fifteen hundred dollars, but at Casper you get a king size mattress for only nine hundred and fifty dollars. Go to Casper.com, C-A-S-P-E-R.com. Use the promo code Rappaport, R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T, and you could save fifty dollars to your purchase on any Casper mattress. Now they have pillows, they have sheets. They're coming out with all sorts of things. I love Casper. I sleep on it every night. My entire house is filled with Casper mattresses. Not that I have 17 mattresses. I act like I had some sort of crazy. G Monetti, what's the do deal? Do you sleep on a Casper mattress? Oh, every night I'm on my Casper, man. My back, all those little muscle flutters, gone. Go to Casper.com, C A S P E R.com. Use the promo code Rapport and save 50 bucks. I'm so proud that they're a sponsor of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. And, and trust me, it's satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like it, return it for free. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I heard about, this is so fucking nuts. You know, there's a, 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 a former college athlete, and his name is Riley Curry. Same right. as Steph Curry's daughter. Yeah. And, and he, he, he stepped forth and went public. He's been receiving accidentally hate mail. Vile hate mail from basketball fans. That they think they're sending it to Riley Curry, who's a little girl, daughter of Steph Curry and his beautiful wife, Aisha Curry. Right. To a three-year-old girl. Like, y you should tell your parents to kill yourself. All these kinds of things. These fucking sick people. He, 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 he's a former guy. His name just happens to be Riley Curry. And, and, and he, he came for I mean, can you? People are crazy that they send this to a little girl. They, they go out of their way to send letters, to write a letter in this day and age 
Nobody writes letters anymore. I wonder, to write I, it to, I, to, I, wonder, I wonder if Peyton Manning gets hate mail. I'm <laughs> sure he does. But, 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 but you know, the race, race is such a factor. I'm sure it's all sick people and the racial stuff. And he, I, I'm sure he gets hate mail, but I'm sure I, I would pretty much guarantee that his kids don't get hate mail. Exactly, man. I, it's, just, it's, just, it's just sick, man. These people live under the rocks in society, man. They, 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 they Twitter, hate, letters, writing letters. Obviously, these people have no lives whatsoever. You have no life, you fuck. And, uh, uh, and, and people, people speak, speaking, speaking of people that do have lives, that are on Twitter and being positive, shout out to the entire rapper pack. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the rapper chicks. Moody okay, and shout out to anybody who supports the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast in any way, shape, or form. We see you, we hear you, we appreciate you. Word up. All of you guys. Hell yeah. You know, uh, Monetti, what did you do to celebrate National Selfie Day? Uh, it was a couple of days ago. Can you fucking believe that this is, this is what we're coming to? Yo, they said people who take selfies uh, have like a uh, mental illness too. What, the ones who do it all the time? Yeah, like, it's like you have a, it, something's wrong with you. The, the psychologist has said that. Huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where? Huh? I'm, yo, think about it. You take about 30 selfies. Motherfuckers take 30 selfies a day. A lot of people do that. And they said yeah, that. Yeah, they're crazy. And, that, and, and they say that's, that's, uh, that, that's a window into your insecurity. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You know, they're always, uh, you know, the amount of self-importance yeah. that they pose on what they're doing. Hell yeah. I, I was on a train the other day, and I saw a motherfucker wearing a shirt, called, and it, the shirt said, Eating Animals is Weird. Oh. And, I, and I'm saying, like, all, with all this uh, vegan and all this, like, yo, we don't like this and, and we hate animals and we love it, but we don't want you to. Got me to thinking, is there anorexia in Africa? What do you mean? Like, the only reason that people are vegans is because you live in a wealthy country where you can, right. where you can choose what you can eat. Right. What if these same Because if people your ass was hungry, you would kill that fucking cow, eat that fucking cow, eat that pig, eat that fish, and all the other things you don't eat. If, 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 if you needed to feed yourself and your family, you would snap out of that bullshit. I'm so tired of that vegan bullshit. Absolutely. Like, eh, eh, the, the preaching. If you want to do it, that's one thing. But all the preaching and the holier-than-thou bullshit... I'm not with all that. If you do it for your diet and all that, that's cool. But what did he say? Animals or what does it say? Uh, eating animals is weird. How, how about how about eating these nuts? Uh, is that weird? <laughs> huh? How's that? Is 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 that weird? Or how about you? Well, then starve yourself, you dumb fuck. Go go to Central Park and 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 climb a tree, you fucking weirdo. Go eat a pine cone, you freak. And 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 none of these motherfuckers have cows have farms you love the animals so much why don't you fucking build a zoo right build a fucking zoo in your house i don't see you walking around with 10 stray dogs a cow and some stray chickens word i don't think that you're eating eating animals is weird word <laughs> yo espn uh has uh the naked uh issue coming out now and I, uh, yeah, they got the Dwayne Wade issue. on the cover. My my thing is, these guys at ESPN, the photographers, and the people who put this together, I think they're perverts. Why so? Why we need to see Dwayne Wade naked? <laughs> He's a basketball player. That's what I want to see him as. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Ne oh, they got Vince Wilfork. This is a slob. Right. This motherfucker's 370. Come on. Come on. Perverts. Well, I think they, they, they I don't know what they're trying to do. You know, they, they're trying to create an art. Like, oh, they're athletes, their bodies. Are, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, that, but if that, they got Vince that's what Wolf they say. For, that's what they say. <laughs> yeah, you think that you think that's a uh, uh, a little uh, 
a little uh, way to see to, to see some shit. They have the women on there too. They should have coaches. Have Stan Van Gundy naked. Yeah, why don't they have Stan and Stan and fucking Jeff Van Gundy naked? Word. <laughs> What's the matter with that? Have them c- covering themselves with some fucking bagels. Hey, w- what do you think about Iggy Azalea? Her and a uh, Swaggy P. She threw his shit out. Oh, word. Oh. Hey, good. I mean, this, what? Who, who was the snitch? He was a snitch, right? No, he wasn't the snitch. Oh, he's got snitched on, but he keeps. I guess he was cheating on her ass. I don't know what she expects. We told her a year ago on the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. You think this is going to end good? This is a young basketball player. You, you you think these guys are are not freaking off as they should? But he he shouldn't be trying to like lock up a chick in a relationship. But but yo. I don't know what these girls think. What do you think happens on the road? Like, wh- what do you think happens? Word. You threw yourself at him to get where you got. Word. Absolutely. It's not like he, he courted this woman. But that poor Iggy Azalea, I mean, she gets all the fuck up. Not that poor Iggy Azalea, whatever. She, she, she's whatever. But th- that, that relationship, I don't really even give a butt about that shit. Yo, you know there was a dude who, 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 who was trying to kill Donald Trump. And I said, now I don't wish... I don't fuck with Donald Trump, but I don't wish death on anybody, and I don't, I don't support anybody trying to kill anybody. But rest assured, this isn't going to be the only, only time that this happens. People are going to start coming after Donald Trump, and it's not going to be the, like your normal, everyday, crazy person. Yeah. It's going to be like some vegan, regular people who like, feel like they need to do that to save the world. Yeah, but they, they already got one guy who, who, who tried to take a pot shot at him. They're going to they're gonna try to leave Harvey Oswald his ass. Oh, for sure. But, for sure, they're going to try to do that. But check this out. We got a new thing happening in New York. Single stall bathrooms in New York City are now gender neutral for gender non-conforming individuals. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Say, say that again. Single stall bathrooms in New York City are now gender neutral for gender non-conforming individuals. What the fuck does that mean, man? So if you say, you, if you just say, I'm a female, and you look like Dan Haggerty, you're a female. So where is my come up? I'm a race non-conforming individual. Right, right. You don't conform, right? You're not, you're not, you fuck I'm, that. I'm not black. You try to arrest me and try to say male black. No. No. Oh, we're right. They say, oh, we got a male black broken taillight, uh, I- illegal turn. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. That's a civil suit, asshole. I- Watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> I'm offended that you called me black. Yeah. I, and not only am I, and the reason why I'm offended is because I don't identify as black. Yeah. So. And I want to bring that to court. Yeah. So, so where are these where where are these um where are these toilets? All throughout New York City. So get ready. If you gotta take a squirt somewhere, you could be encountering a guy who says he's a female. Jesus Christ. It, it, this political correct bullshit is so... You know what? We need to just go, start, go back to start just pissing on the corners how we did in the 70s and the 80s. <laughs> things, were, things were simple then. Word. Things were simple then. I, I mean, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll pay the $75 fine. I got to take a piss. You know, I'll bring a sheet. I'll duct tape a sheet up. I got to take a shit. I don't want to deal with the toilets. It's easier to just go outside. <laughs> Who needs this bullshit? Yo, everything is changing. It all started when they changed. Everything is changing at a rapid pace, man. It it, it all started when Giuliani changed the deuce. That's when shit went down the hill. Yo, yeah, with with the 42nd Street, if you're not from New York City, Times Square used to be, it it used to be the devil's playground. Yeah. But it had a sense of humor about it. It was the devil's playground with a sense of humor. So, yeah, there would be occasional mugging and, 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 and kind of, you know, stabbing and these kinds of bad things. But it was good times down there at Times Square. <laughs> you could go to see a porno. You could get like a little dime bag of weed, whatever you were into. Chinese, you know, if you want a little, you Kung know, Fu what was it? Or Bruce Lee, Kung Fu flicks, regular flicks, whatever you were into. And now it's like fucking Disneyland. Down there. It's the last place you want to be. Yep. So what are you thinking about these rap emojis? I think they're fantastic. For those of you who hasn't seen, you know, Kim Kardashian did her little Kim Kim emojis. 
Well, we, we, we got rat emojis now, you fuck you. Yeah. We got the gringo man dingo. We got unfolding the loaf, the meat of the mustache, all the monikers, all the sayings, the rapper pack, Wheezy, my dog has one. We also have some dope ass gringo mandingo necklaces. Okay, official fantasy rings. The guys that did our, our, our fantastic 2015 Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast Championship rings, they made gringo mandingo necklaces. They're cheap, they're fun, they're cool. They're at officialfantasyrings.com forward slash I am Rappaport. What else you got for me, Monetti? I see uh, two things about Chloe. Since you mentioned Chloe uh, Kardashians, oh, Chloe God. has a, a new addition to her uh, derriere. Another, like they're, they're highlighting the, the, the curvature, the shape of the S, which means it's fake. And that, And another thing, Oh, I saw it the other day. It's it's totally fake. Absolutely, and it's it's, it's a fake ass. Yeah, yeah. And, and Howard Stern, the greatest interviewer, my favorite interviewer, he had her on that show, and he asked her about surgery. He asked her about her breast, and he 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 forgot. He missed the boat on the question of 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 all questions. What's up with your ass? Right. How he didn't ask that question. He had her right there. She was so happy to be. She was so talkative and she was being so sexual and flirty and la 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 la. He asked her about her tits. She said they weren't fake. I believe that. They, 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 don't, they don't look fake. That ass is not real. Of course. And these chicks, forget just the Kardashians, these girls that are deforming themselves. Yo, you 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 can't you can't fuck with God. The, the the ass is gonna fall apart. The face is gonna fall apart. The lips are gonna fall off. You you can't trick God. It Word. doesn't work like that with your and yo you you how could you think you're a bad bad bitch? And, and I mean that in the most best way. How could you think you're a bad bitch? And I mean that in the most respectful way. How could you think you're you, you, you're pretty and sexy and, and and be proud of yourself when you you have manufactured your, your the structure of your face and your your actual body? I don't yeah. understand that. I, I, I know. don't understand it. You're, I bet you're, you, you're so much doper the way you are. I, I I bet most of these women when they home alone they cry in the mirror. You don't have you you know you feel it. The shit is fake. It's fake. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine. I've never felt a fake ass. I, I felt uh, uh, breast implants. It is, it is shocking. It's, now, some people have deformities. We have this gentleman who has uh, they got the lobe transplant. You know, some women after birth, uh, you know, they, they, their breasts are, are, you know, they're not. I understand that. But if it's just for vanity purpose, I, I can't support it. I don't understand it. Right, right. If I had a fake lobe, I wouldn't be out here fronting like that. I'd be just... It, I'll come in, I'll, I'd feel so bad in the house. Like, I got to do this. Because when I'm with my whoever, I got a fake loaf. They got to see that. Yeah, and you know it's not going to be normal. It's going to be weird. And you're going to feel worse. And now, number two, she said yeah. she wants to get a restraining order on Lammy. Now, now Lamar begins to get smeared in the press. She said she wants to get a restraining order against Lamar Odom. Yeah, because he he's he, he's he's reverting back to that Q Burrow type shit. <laughs> right. Well, she she thought her she thought she could she 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 could love it out of him, and she thought you know like you know by you know like that just that bullshit that that was she didn't really want to accept who he was, and he wasn't showing her who he who he really was. And, and, and unfortunately, he has a, a terrible drug addiction, and, and I hope this guy doesn't wind up dying, man. I'm really concerned about this guy's well-being. Word. We, and we told you what to do. Go to China, get yourself in shape, play ball with Stephon Marbury. Stephon Marbury's starring in a biopic in China about himself. Okay, now, now, now granted, the craft services might be serving a, a cooked dog, but you could sift your way through that. You know, you 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 you, you could figure it out. Yeah, I, I I I don't know. This this Lamar Odom thing is is just yo. It's terrible. It's I, terrible. I I I implore NBA TV to do a story on Stephon Marbury. Go to China and 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 pump my man up because right. he was left for dead. He was wilding, and look how he 
uh, reinvented himself and look what he's doing. He doesn't have to come back to the United States and beg to get on no coaching staff and beg to get on some job with, with a team. He's, he's an icon in another land across the globe. That's yeah, the way good. That's the way you do it. So highlight that so other players could follow in his footsteps. And they wouldn't yeah, have you to be out to here, just be here chasing these, 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 these women with fake asses. You got a fake ass and he's chasing these bros. Like, they're, they're the, like that's going to make things better in your Word. life. All right, all right, look, this is the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Um, feel free to give us a review, good, bad, or indifferent. Can't tell you how much we appreciate the rap pack. Can't tell you how much we appreciate the fans. Can't tell you how much we appreciate the support. Uh, we're always going to go hard body karate. The show. Karate. Speaking of hard body karate, if you want any soft ass Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast t shirts, including the hard body karate t shirt, which is so sick, go to district lines forward slash Iron Rapport. Um, we're easy to find on Twitter, on Instagram. If you drive by me, say, yo, what's up, Gringo Mandingo? Nothing makes me happier than when fans greet me as the Gringo Mandingo. Nothing brings, it, it tickles me. It will always continue to tickle me. I will never take that for granted. Um, uh, G Monetti, you got any parting words for this uh, for this this Gold Star uh, episode or what? Um, I, uh, we love the fans, man. I just want to shout out all the fans, and uh, uh, we just love the art, Mr. Morris. All the people who draw shit, love it. Shane, Trader, all these yep. cats, I love all, all all you guys, Hubert, all you guys. We see it all. We appreciate it. We know it takes some time, and every single time we we pass it to each other. I send it to my mom. She, she trips out. Every we, we, We're aware of it. We appreciate the more, the merrier. All of it's great. Vegas, all you guys, uh, we, we appreciate it. It's the Iron Rap Stereo Podcast, and, and we're out. Yeah.